Welcome to On Air with Cash. Today, we have a very special guest. She's one of my dear friends. You know her from films like Everlasting, Zombievers, The Dark Tapes, Death House. She has three films coming out this year alone. She rocks. Please welcome my good friend, Courtney Palm. Hello. Courtney. <laughs> Woo. You're always filming something. My God, Courtney, it is so good to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm amazing. And Cash, so are you. Like, you really have this exuberance and this light about you. And I love, like, just being around you and near you. So not being with you, like, being here in Colorado where we can't hang out, it's just, it's so strange, you know? It's just, it's a, it's a new reality. But, yeah, I'm keeping busy and having fun with life. And that's what's important. It's very mutual, Courtney, too. There's just always this creative energy that I get just by being around you. I just miss nights when we would just be working on something and then we'd run to an event and then we would just hang out at Swingers all night and catch up yeah. and just talk about ideas. But uh, no, Courtney, everyone, Courtney is like one of those people that she's just always been there for me. When I was actually at a crossroads and I had just done this independent film, I didn't really know career-wise what to do. Courtney was the person who actually put me on this better direction and showed me some opportunities and you know, Courtney, really just watching your, your perseverance and your strength really helped me when I was at that crossroads and put me on a better path. And I thank you for that. Yay. Well, that's wonderful. I mean, but that, even though you felt like you were at a crossroads and you were kind of at this low vibration, you were still bringing me up too. Do you know what I mean? So like, there's still this light and this beauty that you have and that you offer the world and that you really put a fire up under my butt too and made me feel more inspired. So it's like, it's, it's mutual and it's a give and take. And it's just a beautiful circle. That's, that's, I mean, that's why we're friends. So that's why we're friends. It's our circle of life, love. Yeah. I love it. You're always working on a film. I mean, you have three movies coming out this year. You have Beyond Paranormal, which is coming out in September. You have oh. Involuntary, which you shot during COVID. And then you also have Two Cents from a Pariah. Yeah. Yeah, they, those are all really fun films. I can't wait to start promoting them. It's just like sucks because there's so many great images, you know, that you get from screen grabs or or just like, you know, taking a photo of the monitor and then, you know, you can't do it. They're like, you can't post this. And it's like, what's I Just, I need to. <laughs> you just itch to like post some of the really cool creative costumes and, you know, the special effects or anything like that. So I'm really excited for those to come out. Definitely. And then between films, I always see you taking care of yourself. You're always meditating. You're always going on a hike. You're very in tune with nature. You've, you're very passionate about your causes. I just really respect you because you're such a great actress and you put everything into your films, but you also take care of yourself equally, if not more. And I think that's what really brings uh, that passion and energy to your roles. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, well, I think what's important, though, is like life is so much bigger than um, like what's right in front of us. So what's right in front of us sometimes is an audition and we feel like we need to book it because we need that role and we need to be validated again and we need to be creative again. But that's not necessarily what life is. That's a creative aspect. That's an outlet. That's an avenue for you to share something that's really special, whether it's a character or just a really fun, goofy story, or just a fun YouTube video, you know, that's great. But what life really is about is getting centered and getting focused. A lot of us have a lot of healing we need to do from childhood trauma, from ancestral trauma, and going out in nature really does ground you and bring you back to earth and understand that there's so much more out there than this like single-minded, I need to be successful, you know, it, it, you just, you have to kind of step back and really focus on like, I don't know, just loving yourself. So then you can in turn love others and respect yourself. So you can in turn respect others. And that's why I take time in nature because we need to do it. I crave it. Like I freak out if I'm not there. So <laughs> that's why I left LA because like the nature there was, there just really wasn't any anymore. It was just like a park or you know, it's dried up or there's trash everywhere. And I just like just needed to get out. <laughs> I feel you on that because I've been stuck here for about a year. And I remember right around the time when you actually moved away, I was, you know, I was kind of reevaluating where I was too. And as far as just where I was going. And I remember there was this year of just 
it, it was good it was because we had so many good projects coming out and stuff was released but I remember just being in this total like go 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 you know it was like promote this do this get this project going and then I remembered it stuff was kind of catching up to me and then I was I was feeling overwhelmed and was really needed to shift gears again which I ended up doing and then even when I met you there was I was at that crossroads and I was going through whatever just clearing out whatever stuff I needed to do but then you know, new experiences do bring new scenarios or conflicts that you have to overcome or go through. And, but I do feel like because I went through a lot of things young, uh, when I was earlier in my life, it helped me, it better prepared me for when those new problems came up. And now I would, I mean, especially this past year, I've really, I, for about a decade, it was boom, 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 work, work, work. And then all of a sudden you have to stay home. And I really got, in touch with myself a lot more. I was exercising more. I was, I had time to go on walks and I was just like, you know, just kind of going up the hill and doing hikes. And you're just like, wow, you know, this is, I was missing out on, I mean, I'm glad I went through that go, go, go phase, but now as things are reopening up, it's really reevaluating and stuff that was important to me maybe two or three years ago. It's, yeah, you know, it's, I'm not there anymore. And I'm, I'm off to this new thing or you appreciate things in life better. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what a lot of people ended up experiencing with, let's say, the lockdown, because you really I almost feel like a lot of us manifested this because we always are go, go, go. You feel like a parent and they're going to work and then they're taking their kids to their extracurricular activities and they're doing homework and they're doing whatever work they need to do and they're cooking dinner and they're cleaning. And it's like, I need a break. I need a rest. And none of us really understood that when we were locked down we could have utilized that time to really focus on ourselves and actually be like, hey, we needed this. We manifested this. This is a literal slap in the face to take a step back and rest. Granted, it's not the same. Like That's just sort of like, I would say, maybe the broader vision around the lockdown, because obviously, you know, some people were getting sick and some people were in the hospital and some people were losing their life and some people were losing their jobs. And it became a little bit bigger than that. But if we take all that negativity that surrounded, you know, this whole past year and even into this year, we can we can really start to change our focus and change our narrative instead of focusing on the negative side of things, we can focus on the positive side of things. So then. So, yeah, we lost our jobs. We can afford rent or whatever. But hey, we got to spend more time with family. We got to spend more time with our pets. We got to tune in. We got to actually rest and watch TV. Like I didn't because I was working. I was doing construction. So that was technically not a, a shutdown. So I was working all summer, all last year. But, um, but yeah, I think it's really important and vital for us to take time to really just chill. That we have asserted ourselves so much so that we're trying to stomp on other people to make ourselves bigger. So we're burning the rainforest down so we can have a company that produces palm oil or animal agriculture. And it's just like, you know, cause we need more money or um, it just, it's like this, it's all over like that. That's what it feels like to me. So when you take a step back, you realize this isn't about just who I can dominate, how I can assert myself. Instead, it's like, how can we be more unifying? How can I be more centered and more grounded and actually see the magic of life without being so caught up with, with work and striving to be somebody because you already are somebody and that's important to know well put and i you know we lost a few people last year and there was a lot of tragedy I mean, even for me i was i had a job for about 10 years and then all of a sudden boom it was just we don't we no longer need this position the company cut a, a good percentage of their staff mm -hmm. and we were all in this situation where we're like what's next uh, fortunately some things did pick up and I was able to get through last year and even into this year. And, but, but even the losses that I had, I would wake up and I would start journaling again. And it's just amazing. Just what you were saying, like there's, whether it's childhood trauma or other life experiences, it really, I mean, really just putting the pen to the paper, just typing and getting everything out has really been so therapeutic for me. And I, it's just amazing. You can watch a show that you watch 20 years ago and then it triggers some emotion or you hear some song that reminds you of a time in your life and then you're like whoa why is this coming back in and then but I've noticed when I start having those where in the past maybe I let it dwell and then something else a negative emotion comes out of it but then when you really sit down write 
let it out, then you're like, oh, wow, I'm not there anymore. And I, this is, I, I needed to just really process and make sense of this past experience and I'm no longer there. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think that's, I don't know. I mean, I've done some research and I've done some spiritual healing and enlightenment. So sitting with that, I've actually been in tune with spirit guides and like archangels. And anyway, there are several archangels that do speak to the humans because they're at a different frequency, different vibration, if you will. We can't really see them. So they speak to us through like technology, essentially. So like, or you'll hear a song over and over in your head, like you were saying, and these lyrics all of a sudden resonate. Like I was bawling one day. I don't even know why I was crying. And I turned on the radio. I was like, I need guidance. I need help. And I'm like, just whatever comes, I'll, I'll just flow with it. Let me flow with it. And I turn on the radio and it's Harry Styles and it's just stop your crying sign of the times. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's a sign of the times. I'll stop crying. Cool. Like this is a beautiful message. And a lot of movies do have like triggers that can bring something up that needs to be brought up out of you so that you can sit with it and see it and move on from it. Or it can also guide you. And you're like, wow, I've been watching this movie for 10 years. I never realized that that particular line could really affect me right now and make me feel better about my life or about what's going on outside. I mean, because there's a lot of degradation on this planet. People are dying, people are being killed. There's civil wars. I mean, we're deforesting a bunch of shit. We're killing billions of animals. We're, the oceans are a mess. Like, but if we keep feeding into that negative narrative, if we keep letting it bring us down, we're gonna stay down. So we really do have to find a way to bring up our energy and really know that like, I don't care what you look like and I don't care what your culture is. We are all people. We are all sharing this planet together. And that's the new narrative that we need to write together. And so when you heal your traumas, when you heal your either ancestral trauma or past traumas or childhood traumas, or even like you said, you have new modern traumas that come into you at this age right now in this now moment, you don't know what to do. So maybe you lash out or project this anger or hurt onto someone else and they project it onto someone else and it becomes this endless cycle of negativity. So once you do this inner healing and this inner journey, you love other people and you understand and you respect them more and that creates a more harmonic field. And that's also science. It's not just hippy dippy bullshit because people always look at me and they're like, oh, you're just, you know, it's just hippy dippy bullshit. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not, it's science. When you start to rewrite your brain, your neuropeptides change, it releases a different set of chemicals in your body. You literally are reprogramming your entire body. You are able to heal from diseases and other illnesses. You are able to manifest a better life and you'll be able to co-create a better reality because you're able to love yourself. And with that love and that honor, you're able to see that love that's within someone else and help it, help it, help them bring that up out of them as well. And that's important. That was so beautifully put, Courtney. I mean, wow. I And everything you're saying is so right on because so many times we don't realize how much our, our personal pain comes in. I mean, if I'm not, if I'm not doing well up here or, some, or in my heart, then I'm not doing the best that I can in my work and what I need to start accomplishing and um, going forward with. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if, if you, there's, there's that balance, whether like if you feel like you're nothing, then you might strive to become something. You might create something that's really beautiful and magical that helps change the world. But then on the other side of it, you could feel like you're nothing and you're, you don't know what to do. So you focus on getting better and attaining more credibility or likability or whatever it is to you and your reality. And you could be hurting other people just to get to this higher position that you think you deserve when really it doesn't matter who you are, you deserve this wholeness you know, you don't have to feel like you have to do something either, but you, but because of what you've gone through, you've taken initiative to create your podcast, which is incredible because then that shares people's stories and their experiences with others who are willing to watch it. And that's amazing. And that's your drive that you've created. And that's something to be really proud of. You know, even if one person watched this video and it was our mother, like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's something to be proud of. So good for you and, you know, good for I, what you're doing sounds amazing. Like your, your awareness and your step to, to journal and to take care of yourself is huge. 
So Thank you, yay. Oh, Courtney. Good for you. Oh, you're just bringing the best out. And, you know, really, because I am um, kind of part of the drive to do this was that, you know, as you know, we both love acting, we love films. And I was really impressed with so many of our colleagues and um, just even other people in our industries who were so good at comedy or so good at acting, but then they were also having podcasts and they were, and just, just the way that certain people who I may have liked their movies, but I didn't know really about, you know, their personal life or their struggles have been so open and um, sharing stories. And for me, I was always more reserved or I didn't know really how to tell a lot of stories. And there was this, uh, when I have people on and we talk about our past struggles or even just certain colleagues and friends because they were so open with me, it made me feel like, you know, I I think that I could have something to say or if my my attitude is like, if, if my story helps someone along the way, because right now there is what with what you're saying as far as, you know, someone being so ambitious that they're just, you know, pushing everyone else aside or not really looking at what they're doing to the world. And I mean, I think these are things that happen in our in the world in general and especially in our business. And I mean, just, I was, I've really been more open with past struggles that I had as far as just kind of being 14, being put in an adult situations, you know, in the industry and then not real. And then, but, you know, the message was because people weren't having the conversations about bullying or, or just even the awareness, oh, this is how things are, suck it up. You're in the big boy world or whatever. And that's just your, you know, for me, it was like I was 14, 15, not really, and didn't have anyone to really talk to about what was happening. And so be, now that there's just people that I've either lost or there's people that are being exposed for stuff who I knew in the past, it's kind of like, well, you know, that's why I wasn't feeling good when I was around this person or I totally knew what my friend was struggling with now or that I'm older, I have a better idea. And it's a, it's unfortunate that we lost this person, but now that I've been able to journal and really get things out and really have a dialogue and I look at the, the new experiences that come and I'm really like, grateful for this moment in time and where I am at now. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And if it wasn't for people, you know, creating this content, we wouldn't feel comfortable doing that because the old narrative is suck it up. Boys don't cry, you know, like it's, you know, or girls, you're over dramatic for crying. And it's just, you know, I think that's why we choose to be artists in the first place. We choose to do films because you get to really have this beautiful expression, depending on what character you get to. I mean, there's so many different characters you can play. And whether it's a fun one like Cruella, there's still so many like deep, like aspects to that character that you can bring forward. And I think that's why you and I were like, we were brought together because we have that energy, that empathic, sensitive energy, but it's also, you know, fun to play characters and express yourself and be around other people that also express themselves. <laughs> I mean, it can be damaging though. I mean, like, you know, when you're doing like a crying scene or something and you have to bring up like trauma in your own life to kind of, that's how I am. I bring up real shit in my life to get these tears coming and it can really be kind of be hurtful you know and it's 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 a lot of work and then you have to do a lot of self-work after it to pull yourself out of something that's that emotional you know you can't just you don't just fake it you know and that's the thing is like when you're acting you're really feeling these and especially like someone like you and me who has gone through some issues in our lives we're able to pull from that experience and really make a more authentic performance well put, and I, I take everything that you said to heart too. Some of my performances, I remember just having to mentally go places or there was one role that I, I was playing a character who was struggling with addiction and I probably was 20 pounds lighter. I really having protein shakes all week. I was I was drinking a lot of coffee and we, there's, a, there's a scene where I'm melting down and part of it's, it, it required that for the scene, but when I'm just twitching and everything, I feel like, yeah, that was probably like not eating all day and like 10 cups of coffee and just, and, but yeah, I mean, I know what you mean to like really, I mean, for me, that was like a physically transformative role as well too. So it's really, you know, we bring whatever we need to deliver that performance for that role or character. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand is it take, it's, they could be like, oh, that movie sucked or whatever. And you're like, oh my God, you know, I wasn't eating. I was just chugging coffee. Like I was just like, you know, really into this, you know, and the research that you do can really pull you down too. And you're looking at these people who are struggling with addiction. It's hard. It hurts. People take their lives. People OD. I mean, that's happened to my friends and my family. And it's like, you see it and it, 
sucks and it hurts. And that's why you emote it as an actor and you give it to an audience. And it does, it takes a lot out of you. And it, I mean, it's good that you put in the work too and you don't just phone it in, you know, like you actually lost the weight and you, you know, it's like, you don't want to go too crazy though. Cause then you look at like some of the actors that have lost their weight and they can't get it back and they just look sickly and it's not good for your body, obviously, but you know, you want to still take care of your vessel, which is housing your soul. And this is a really important vessel to take care of. So honor it, you know? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Courtney, I just, I, I'm so glad you're here today. I mean, this is just so great catching up. Is there anything else you want to put out there for the for your audience? I'll just tell a little bit about the films I have coming out. So we'll start with Beyond Paranormal because it's the, I think has the most hype. People are most excited about this one because it's, you know, my typical horror film and it's going to, it's going to be really fun. There's a lot of special effects. There's some practical effects too, um, but it's basically like your typical ghost story, but there's some twists and turns to it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. I love the costumes. I love the story. And anyway, that comes out close to Halloween. So that's September 28th. So that will be exciting. And to get us we'll in the Halloween all spirit. Platform. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be like at Walmart and Redbox and iTunes. Um, yeah, so it'll be fun. And then I did a really cute drama with like, it's a father daughter drama. Um, we filmed it in New York and Milwaukee. So it was just like a new, an area that I've been in for a film and that will be out this summer on Amazon. It was an independent film, a privately financed. So, you know, some of those don't really get the love that you want them to get. So that one is two cents from a pariah. And I think that's really deep and it's a good story. And um, the next one was Involuntary, which I filmed during COVID and that was crazy fun. But like, it was just like, it was just madness to do it during COVID though, because we had to do all these swabs all the time and COVID tests all the time. And it was just like, but, at the, but then it got to the point where no one cared anymore because we were in a, a cabin in Big Bear. And so no one was around. It was just us. It was just the crew. And we were always around each other. We were all tested negative. And, but it was so cold that everyone was like, I'm just going to keep my mask on because it's keeping me warm. <laughs> so, and then we saw a bear when we were filming. And everyone was like the California city people and no offense to you. I love all you who were there, but they freaked out. They were like, oh my God, it's a bear. Let's call the cops. We're going to die. And I'm like, it's a bear. Chill out. It's a black bear. And black bears are like super docile. I was like, just leave it alone. Just pick the trash up, bring it inside. But that was cool. Um, but that was fun. And, you know, you know, you like mean zombies for being the last girl standing. You might want to see involuntary because I might be the last girl standing. I don't know. I can't tell you for sure if I am or not. Um, but um, yeah, so those are the three coming out. And um, yeah, I just, I have been trying to enlighten my being, my body, heal and grow as a person. And really I'm here to listen to you too. If anyone's watching and really has anything to say or has something on their mind and you want to like purge some emotional crap or just get some enlightenment from me or even a tarot reading, I'm down to do that for you. I'm here to listen, I'm here to help. I think that's my new shift in my life and my purpose and not really focus on acting so much like where it's like, I need to be an actress or I'm a loser. Now I'm like, I need to be a collective healer and really help people find unity and love no matter who you are, what you've done and collectively be here together. So I'm here to listen to you Courtney, I love you. You inspire me. You're always up to something. You are always on a roll. I can't thank you enough for your time. You heard it. She's got three movies coming out this year. Beyond Paranormal, September, Involuntary. She shot this during COVID and Two Cents from a Pariah, another independent film with a good message. Courtney, you've been such a great friend to me. You're always encouraging me, always inspiring. I love your message and I can't thank you enough for your time today. I love you and I love everyone who watched. Thank you so much for your time and cash. Mwah, lots of love to you. And I wish I could just like actually hug you, like like legit hug you. <laughs> Your hugs. Hmm, I miss you. Okay. I miss you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Courtney Palm today. You are on air with Cash. 